Hello, my name is Katie. I'm Kobe. <laughs> my name's Mia. And this oh. is the, the Couch, Couch Potato, Potato Lab. Lab. <laughs> where we bring the science to you. So today we have another wonderful episode of the Couch Potato Lab. Make sure if you haven't already, you have downloaded that lab manual at bit.ly slash couch potato lab it's there at the bottom of the screen so make sure you download that lab manual so you can follow along with us so we also have uh social media to answer all of your wonderful questions our handle is the exact same for our youtube facebook twitter and instagram at eyes youth and make sure you use the hashtag couch potato lab if you want to ask us any questions, give us any comments or suggestions, that would be wonderful. If you're not into social media, no problem. You can also text us at 306-570-1013, once again, down at the bottom there. All right, so again, we have a wonderful episode today, but uh, what is science without <laughs> the scientists? So let's meet our scientists today. Who do I have to my left? Hello everybody, my name is Kovi. My pronouns are he and him. And a fun fact about me is that I am a fish whisperer. Yes, I have a, my little friend right here. Um, its name is Darcy, and Darcy's gonna tell me a little secret about Katie. Yes, Darcy, yes, yes, Darcy, all right. So what Darcy said was that um, Katie has been eating some of his friends, and Darcy is very upset. Katie? You know what, Kobe? You are right. My name is Katie. <laughs> My pronouns are she, her, and Darcy was right. My fun fact for today is that I am obsessed with sushi. Of sushi is one of my absolute favorite foods. And uh, sorry to Darcy, but you know that's the way life is. <laughs> so who do I have to my right? Hi, my name is Mia. My pronouns are she, her, and a fun fact about about me is that my favorite animal is a panda. Ooh, 
Um, Mia, I have a quick question. Um, yeah. Do you know what a panda, the sound of a panda makes? I don't really know <laughs> the sound of a panda, <laughs> but I feel like it's not a very distinct sound. Like, I feel like it sounds like other animals or something. Well, you know what, Mia and Kovi, maybe we could do an episode on the sounds of a panda. <laughs> we don't know. You're going to have to stick with us to see if we do. So before we start the show, we just wanted to take a moment to recognize that ICE and this live stream is operating on Treaty 4 land, which is the traditional territory of the Neowak, Nakaway, Dakota, Nakota, and Lakota peoples, as well as the traditional homeland of the Métis Michif Nation. We also want to recognize that you may be watching us from other numbered treaties or from unceded territory. So thank you for taking a moment to recognize this with us. Wow. Wow, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Wow, look at me go. Kofi, what are you doing? Um, I'm playing a game. Yeah, so like I made a game on Scratch. Um, and it's called a starving shark. So the main goal is that I'm going to control my shark with this micro bit and I'm going to try to chase all the fish in the sea. So if I eat a fish, then I gain a point. But if I eat a puffer fish, then I lose a point. Yeah, it's super, super cool. Mia, isn't this so cool? Kobe, that is so cool. I so badly want to learn how to play that and make it. Well, you know what, Mia? You may be in luck because we, in a couple of weeks, are starting to host Virtual Eyes Camp. It's going to be a fantastic time. We have three different camps we're offering. Eyes, all girls, and code makers. If you want to learn how to use micro bits and scratch, code makers will largely be focusing on that. So just remember that registration is open up now. You can register and uh, hang out with us virtually. But for now, we are still doing Couch Potato Lab episodes <laughs> every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, for the entire summer. So you're stuck with us for a little bit. <laughs> By the way, we have a very fabulous episode uh, today for the show. And uh, I was just wondering uh, if we could do a little bit of an interactive survey with all of you from home. What do you guys Ooh, think? Ooh, I yeah. think that's a great idea, Katie. What are, what are you gonna do with it? Are you gonna ask them like fun questions like, what is your favorite fruit? So fun. <laughs> <laughs> Kobe, that is a very fun question, but I actually have some pre-made questions here. So if you are watching from home, I want you or a parent or guardian to get out some paper, get out a pen or a pencil, and write down these questions. And I want you to submit these questions to us, okay? The first question, I'll repeat them twice, just in case you missed them. So first question, how many hours do you spend playing video games a week will do. So Kobe has been playing his game all day. You know, even in rehearsal, he was playing his game. So if he seems a little out of it, you know that's why. But <laughs> we would like you to know. So this is number one. How many hours do you spend playing video games a week? Okay. Question number two. What's your favorite science? Eyes, if you've forgotten, stands for educating youth in engineering and science. We're all science lovers here. I know you're a scientist at home. I'd like to know what your favorite type of science is. So question number two, what is your favorite type of science? Finally, question number three, have you been to ICE camp before? ICE has a long history of educating youth and we would like to know if you have been one of the youth that has been educated by us. So if you have been to ICE camp before, we would love to hear that. Question number three, just so you guys all have that, have you been to ICE camp before? Awesome. So what we're going to do is at the end, we are going to all make a graph of these three different types of questions. Now, before we get into that, I think we need to dive in a little bit deeper into what a graph actually is. Kovi, could you help me out with that? Yes, for sure, Katie. So what a graph is, it's a picture or a diagram that's showing data um, or numbers in a very organized way. Because scientists um, take a lot of data from their experiments and it's usually in numbers. So for example, um, an experiment I could be doing would be like, um, Katie cries um, when she sees different types of animals. And turns out that she cries five times when she sees um, 
a dog, but only two times when she sees a cat. But sometimes these numbers can be a lot, right? They can be like 3,422. And it's hard to read those numbers. So these graphs allow us to see them in pictures and in visuals, uh, making it more appealing and easy for everyone to understand. Does that help, Katie? Yes, that does help. And you are not wrong, Kobe. I do cry when I see dogs a lot. <laughs> I love those little animals. They are fantastic. All right, so I'm kind of getting the sense of what a graph is, what we're going to be doing today. Uh, but I would like a little bit more of a visual. So Mia, could you kind of explain what are some of the components of a graph? Maybe provide a visual for us. Yes, so there will be a visual, but we're going to be talking about the Y and the X axes. So we have an x-axis, which is the horizontal axis. So it goes along, or er, it's sideways. And what's going to happen is this is our independent variable. So that means that, I that it does not matter what is happening anywhere else. It is still going to stay the same. So it is constant. Whereas our y-axis is our dependent variable, which means that whatever happens on the x-axis is going to affect what is happening on the y-axis. So for example, if we had a graph that was um, distance per time, the time would be our independent variable, and it would always be at certain times that something would happen, whereas our distance would be our dependent variable, where no ma depending on what time it is, the distance will change. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Mia, for that wonderful explanation. Now, it is a little tricky sometimes to make sure we're getting all the concepts right. So just remember, if you have any questions, suggestions, comments, random outbursts, make sure you send them our way. Text that number at 306-570-1013 or reach us on social media. Our handle is at Youth on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok, I have been told. <laughs> Also, you can use the hashtag Couch Potato Lab to reach us on any of those handles. So keep those questions rolling in, guys. All right, so we are going to go into some different types of graphs, okay? So the first graph we are going to look at is called a bar graph. Now, I know we're going to have another graphic that's going to pop up here, perfect. I love this graph because cookies are one of my favorite foods, along with sushi. Almost all meals, I will eat sushi and so cookies. So, Katie, you really like peanut butter? Not peanut butter cookies, <laughs> not for me. Uh, I am allergic, but <laughs> all the other kinds of cookies. So, you could see from that graph that that is called a bar graph, which is the first type of graph that we are going to be covering today. So, just as Mia explained, on the x-axis, we have the different types of cookies. So, we have chocolate chip, peanut butter, oatmeal, and raisin. On the y-axis, the vertical axis, we have numbers that people have reported that their favorite cookies are. So let's take a look at chocolate chip. We can see that seven people said that chocolate chip is their favorite type mm -hmm. of cookie, whereas peanut butter is four, oatmeal is seven, so it's tied with chocolate chip, and raisin is three. This is exactly what a bar graph is. And if you guys are okay, Mia and Kobe, going into a bit of activity, I would love to do a little bit of a, a visual for how we can build a bar graph. Yes, I think for today's activity, um, we are going to need a couple materials, but we are going to make a bar graph with our activity. So the materials that you will need is a, maybe a paper or grid paper, if, um, if you have any by chance. You're going to need a marker or a writing utensil, like a pencil. Um, you're going to need a ruler to make some straight lines or any, like maybe a box if you don't have a ruler. Um, you're going to need a target. So the target that we're going to use today is this big poster board. And we're pretty much going to aim and throw um, any object um, onto that poster board. So today I'm going to use a hacky sack. And Mia has a weird little thing there. What is that? Yeah, I'm going to be using a sponge. <laughs> and we're going to see how many times that we can hit the target um, doing it normally, spinning, and with our eyes closed. Oh, so normal spinning and eyes closed. So those are our conditions, right? Yes. Okay, so if I remember correctly, is that x-axis or y-axis? X-axis. That Yes, yeah. that would be the x-axis. Perfect. 
All right. right, so let's get into our activity here today. So if you wanted to follow along, you can grab a friend, family member, and they can also help you hold up the target or shoot some different objects. But let's take a look at Mia and Kovi's skills for today. <laughs> so if you wanted, I made this handy dandy chart here on our whiteboard and we'll take a closer look at it later. Um, but I have Mia and Kovi's names at the top and we're just going to count the number of hits that they get versus the number of misses so that we're going to be able to graph this. All right, Mia, how are you feeling? I'm ready. Okay. Okay. <gasps> so just three times first normally. That was I a think hit. That was nice. a hit. <laughs> I will count that as a hit. That was pretty close. One more. Ooh. Ooh, I don't know if that one. <laughs> Maybe not that one. But you know what? Two out of three, Mia. You have really been using that arm Thank there, you. hey? Okay, now I'm gonna spin. <laughs> Ooh, Ooh, that was that good. Was good. Yeah, that was good. That counted. That didn't count. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mia. It's okay. Oh. Oh no, that was not a count either, Mia. Oh. You did a little bit worse with the spinning, but <laughs> you still got one, so that's pretty good. All right, eyes closed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you Ooh, got it right on I? the dot. <laughs> yes. Great Are you job. You cheating? <laughs> <laughs> no. Did that one? That happen? was that was good. I count. Okay. Wait a minute. Mia, do you have your eyes closed? Um, yes. <laughs> it didn't look like that to I me. I know, maybe I didn't. I'm not sure. <laughs> Close those eyes. Now shoot. Oh, that was a miss. All right, so that was Darn pretty it. good. You got two. So Gosh. before we go into Kovi, let's just take a look at her score here. So we have Mia, two, one, two. Two. So those are pretty good scores. But if you remember, I did call out Mia for having her eyes closed on that third time. And that's because we want to try to control our variables. So variables in science define something that can change. And if we can keep our variables constant or the same, then we're able to make sure that our data is reliable. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, test with Kovi now, but just remember that not all of the variables are the same. So Kovi and Mia are not the same person. Mia could be a professional baseball player for all we know, and Kovi could never throw a ball in his life. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't really know. That control is not the same. At the same time, Mia is using a sponge, which is kind of lighter than a hacky sack. So the weight is also going to be a variable. We can't control all the variables, but we're going to do our best, make sure that Kobe is not cheating on us. All right, it is my turn um, normally for three times. Ready, get set, go. <gasps> oh, Ooh, good oh, one, Kobe. That. that was Thank a hit. You. No, I'm not <laughs> going to count that. <laughs> that wasn't bad, though. That was close. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> oh, Kovi and Mia are tied so far. Okay, spinning time. Spin. You, so one of the controls is like how many times you spin. So how many times did you spin again, Mia? I spinned once. You spun once. Okay, I'll spin once as well. Hmm. <laughs> I'll give that. Yes. Perfect. Oh, <laughs> that that was probably oh, the, the most far <laughs> off that we've seen so far, Kovi. <laughs> I'll give that as well. Perfect. Ding, ding, ding. Oh, and Kovi takes the lead in the spin Ooh. category. However, we do not know how this eyes close <laughs> one's going to Okay. Mm-hmm. You nice. got it. Oh, you got Ooh, it again. Wow. <laughs> I just need one more to beat Mia. Yeah, I'd say that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice. Wow. Awesome. Well, thank you thank for taking you. part in that activity, you two. If you want to head back to your seats, we're going to take a look at our board right now. Okay. So we can see that they have different values. So that means that they have different data points that we're going to be able to plot on our graphs. So Kovi and Mia, if you want to quickly write down these numbers on your whiteboard so that we're able to graph. 
Viewers at home, if you want to make sure you have your graph paper or extra paper available and that you have your data points that you are able to graph along with us, please make sure that you have that available now. Kovi and Mia, do you have your values? Yes, yes. we do. Wonderful. All right. I'm going to flip this fancy dancy board so that we're able to do this activity together. And we are going to dissect a graph. We're going to look at the components of a graph. The first thing that we need to do is we need to create a title for our graph. Just like a storybook, if I was going to pick up a book that I'm super interested in, but it doesn't have a title, I don't know what it's going to be about. Our graph needs a title to tell the viewers of the graph what is it going to be reporting to us. <coughs> for example, if I want to look at a graph of how many dogs are out there in the world, that's something that interests me. If I want to look at a graph of how many cats are there, cats are there in the world, I'm not a big cat fan, so that's not something that I want to see. So the title gives the viewer a little bit of a window into what the data is going to tell us. Kovi, what title did you use for your graph? So the title that I use for my graph is called Successful Throws um, at a Target by Kovi. So I know that one important thing about titles is that it needs to be very, very specific. So I show that I am throwing it. Um, what, are, what, what am I throwing it at? I'm throwing it at a Target and Who by Kovi. So that's my title, Katie. Wonderful. Thanks, Kovi. All right, so we have our title here. Next, what we're going to do is we are going to put our X and our Y axes. So again, remember that this is what Mia kind of talked about, and it's very important that we have both of these. But along with this, this isn't really telling me anything. I just see two lines together. I need to know what are these values that we're plotting. This could be anything. This could be dogs. This could be sushi. This could be cardboard. I don't know what it is. Same with this. We need to put titles on our axes as well to tell the person what we are measuring. Mia, what did you put for your titles? Okay, so what I put was on the side on our Y axis, I put number of hits. So it's every time that um, Kovi or I got or hit the target correctly. And then I put the numbers one, two, three, because we did it three times. So it's gonna, out of three, how many times did we hit the target? And then on the bottom, I put conditions. Um, and so the the conditions are the three different types of ways that we hit the target. And then I wrote them down as my categories as normal, spun, or spin, and eyes closed. And then those are my categories. Great. Thank you, Mia. So we have both the X and the Y axes now, and I'm sure that Kovi's graph looks the same. We have our conditions here. We have usually numbers here. Now the most important thing is to do our data. How about we start with Mia again? I think she's just finishing up her graph there. Yes. So I did my graph, and the first time when I did it normally, I got two hits. So I made my bar graph go up to there. And then for my spin, I only got one. So then I cut it off where the one was. And then for eyes closed, I got two again. So then I put it up to number two. So then you can see that which, which ones I did better at and which one I didn't do so good at. Wonderful, thanks Mia. While Kofi's just finishing up his graph, uh, we have a question from Sally that I would love to answer. So Sally is asking, when I write stories, I will pick a silly title. Can I pick a silly title for my graph too? That's a great question, Sally. I think that it is very tempting sometimes to pick a silly title, especially for a story. I think that's okay. But sometimes when we're doing science, we want to pick a title that is specific to the graph that we are doing. So yeah, you could see that Kovi's title was not very exciting, it was not very silly, but at the same time, we were able to tell exactly what Kovi was going to be reporting to us. So for science, try to really make sure that it is concise to what you are going to be reporting. Kovi, let's take a look at your graph. Yeah, so I really liked your question, Sally, and I decided to change my title just a little bit. So now it is throwing a hacky sack 
at a target by Kobe, the best thrower. Yes. Silly. <laughs> All right, so if you're looking at my graph, you can see that um, my throws normally and when I was spinning um, was at two. So I matched with Mia for normal and spin um, a little bit more. But you can see that the normal and spinning one, um, I'm pretty much average or generally I get pretty okay. My throws are okay for that. But you can see that when my eyes were closed, I did really, really well and I hit all the targets um, with three in total. Yeah, so that is my graph. Wonderful. Thanks, Kobe. All right, so those graphs are fantastic. Your graphs look great. I uh, wanted to talk about three little definitions here just so we have an idea of what they are. And these are mean, median, and mode. So you might have heard of these before. Let's start with mean. And another word for mean is average. So if you heard the word average, that means it is the kind of the middle value or what, what is the value that is most reported. So if I have three numbers, one, two, three. One plus two is three, three plus three is six, okay? So this are, these are my total value points. If I wanted to, to take the average of this, th what I have to do is divide by how many numbers I'm counting. So I'm counting three numbers here. Six divided by three equals two, okay? So that is my average value. However, me median is not exactly that. So median is the middle number in a set of numbers. So here, my data points are one, two, three. When I put them in order from smallest to largest, median is the middle number. That means two is our median. So far, our mean and our median are the same. It's not always like that. It just happened in this example. Mode is the third one, and mode is the most reported number. So if I was to change this a little bit, and I went one, two, three, three, then my mode is actually three, because one and two are reported only once, but three is reported two times. All right, so I think that we have done a lot with graphs, and we have been having a great time with graphs. I think that we should be uh, looking a little bit more of an actual experiment if Kobe is ready for that. Yes, Katie. <coughs> I really loved the elephant toothpaste that Katie and Tom and Sabrina worked on um, for, for the Couch Potato Lab. And they made a really, really cool experiment where um, putting yeast and some other chemicals made it made caused a cool explosion reaction. And I s decided to bring it back again and use and make a graph out of that. So what I'm going to do is, ma after um, making the reaction happen, I'm going to take the height of the explosion, right? Because I know that it increases um, over time. So I'm going to keep track of that data and then make a graph from the all the data that I created. So right here, I have a mixture of yeast and warm water. And right here, in this bottle, I have a mixture of um, dish soap, hydrogen peroxide, and food coloring. I decided to use um, blue and purple, so it kind of, I'm blue and red, because it makes purple, and also um, it might look a little bit like toothpaste. Yeah. Okay, are we ready, team? Yes. Yes. All right, so I know that um, when I'm mixing it all up, I'm going to use a different graph. I, should I be using a bar graph? I'm maybe. I don't know, Kobe. I think that bar graphs are especially great when you have specific values and whole values. But when we're dealing with something like time, it's not always whole values. You could easily have half a minute or something. So is there a different type of graph that we could use when doing this experiment, Mia? Yes. So what graph I think we should use for this is a line graph. And this line graph really looks at the dependent variables and how they change over a period of time. So it's like a trend. So we'll have a lot of little points of it changing over time. And then we can add a line that goes through it so you can see peaks and differences of what happened throughout this time. For example, we have a graph that um, has to do with Katie eating sushi. 
And on this graph, you can see um, every single month and how many times that month that Katie ate sushi. And in April and November, there seems to be a really high peak. Katie, why did you eat so much sushi those months? Oh, man. You know what, Mia? That is a wonderful question. And uh, a wonderful response is that I was coming out of hibernation in those months. <laughs> At the same time, November is my birthday month. Need to treat yourself a little bit more. And if you have more questions about my sushi intake, please make sure to send those in at 306-570-1013. Or you could also reach us on social media at Eyes Youth on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Make sure you're using that hashtag Couch Potato Labs. We have been receiving wonderful questions, uh, so make sure they're coming in. But let's go back to Kobe's experiment now. All right, I am ready with all the materials that I will need and to create this reaction. So I'm going to pour this yeast water mixture into this bottle of different chemicals. All right, in three, two, one. Wow. It's foaming. With my ruler, I'm going to measure it. 14, 12, 10, 8, 6. Wow, look at that go. It's even leaking. So what I'm going to do is uh, for every two seconds, I'm going to measure the height of the reaction. So I'm going to quickly jot that down. That looks like a great time, Kobe. That was a <laughs> wonderful experiment. <laughs> if you ever want to go back and watch our past episodes on elephant elephant's toothpaste, please do. While we're waiting for Kobe to do that graph, let's take a look at some of our questions here. All right, so I know that graphs are used a lot in math, but do scientists use graphs too? Hmm. Mia, what do you think? Do scientists use graphs as well? Yes, scientists for sure use graphs all the time. When they do experiments in their labs, they're going to have a whole lot of data points that they're going to need to graph to see what happens um, during this experiment. Awesome. Thanks, Mia. Also have another very important question from Rex the Cat. Thanks for watching, Rex the Cat. Why do you cry less at cats, Katie? Uh, you know what? Uh, cats have never really been my friend. They don't really like me. They hiss at me and they kind of scratch at me. I'm sure you wouldn't, Rex, but you know what? Maybe when I meet you one day, you'll be much nicer to me than other cats. But dogs seem a little bit more, more my friend than cats. But cats surely are our lovely animals. Mia, do you have a preference, dogs or cat? Well, I am allergic to cats. <laughs> And I'm not the biggest fan of dogs, but I'm really growing to like dogs. So I guess I would say dogs. <laughs> That's very fair, especially <laughs> if you are allergic. But uh, awesome. That would actually be a really fun graph to make as, make, uh, make as well. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to go out, ask your neighbors, family, friends, if they prefer dogs or cats, you can graph that. Send us in a picture whenever you want. Also, I think that we should take a look at what Kobe is doing with his line graph. I made a wonderful line graph. So on my y-axis, it has um, the height in centimeters. And instead of going up by ones, I went up by twos. And on the bottom, I d uh, for the x-axis, I decided to use time as my independent variable because it is consistent, doesn't change, like what Mia mentioned. And I just also decided to go by two because I was measuring every two seconds. And as you can see, that in the very, very beginning, after the reaction, it increased, right? And at about 10 seconds, it started to stop. And it started to flatten out and not increase as much anymore. So that is my graph for my elephant's toothpaste. Yeah. Awesome. So that looks like a another wonderful graph. So far, we have looked at bar graphs and we have looked at line graphs. Remember, if you wanted, you could even come up with a bit of an experiment yourself. Kobe decided to do elephant's toothpaste, but there's no saying what you can do. The sky's the limit. Think of an experiment or a question that you can ask people. Graph it and let us know. You may even end up in our social media. So that would be s pretty sweet. All right, so I'm understanding that graphs are used for value points and that it's an easy way to represent numbers and that there's different kinds of graphs. 
But to be honest, I just am a little bit more confused if are, are there more types of graphs or are, are those the only types of graphs? Like, w what do you think, Kobe? I think that there's more than just those two graphs that we mentioned. The last one that we wanted to talk about is called the pie graph. And the pie graph is my favorite because it's really, really easy to see. And it looks like a pie and pies are my favorite dessert. So right here, um, the thing is that pie graphs kind of look like a pie. So right here, I made a graph, uh, a pie graph about Katie. So the title is called Success Rate of Scaring Katie. And there's two different colors, the successful part and the unsuccessful part. So if it's successful, then it's blue. If it's unsuccessful, then it's orange. As you can see, um, whenever I scare Katie, it's always a 100% win. And I always scare, scare Katie no matter what happens. Mm. And there's no orange. That means I never fail. I always scare Katie. All right, the thing is, even though I scare Katie, there are many ways I actually scare Katie. So in my second uh, graphic that I made, or the graph I made, um, it shows the different ways I scare Katie. So for example, screaming at her um, has a f um, screaming at her does really really well, and I scare her a lot with screaming, and that's 50% of my s um, scaring uh, tactics. 25% of my scaring tactics is saying boo, and she gets scared. Uh, third is balloon popping because we know that Katie doesn't is very afraid of <laughs> balloons. <laughs> so popping balloons right in front of her face scares her. And last but not least, 10% of my scaring tactics is dressing up in my balloon costume and screaming at her. Wow, double whammy. It really scares her. <laughs> <laughs> so oh. as you can see, all the percentages add up to 100% as a whole, and the pie is separated into different parts. <laughs> all right. Thank <laughs> you for those wonderful graphs, Kobe. And you know what, viewers at home, I know what you're doing. You're sitting on your couch right now thinking that we made those graphs up for the show. I can 100% guarantee you that that is not made up. Kobe <laughs> scares me on the daily, and he has done all of those mm -hmm. things before, and it scares me every time. So uh, that is real authentic data for you there, folks. So thank you, for Kobe, for making those graphs. Katie, I have a quick question for you. Um, out of all those tactics, which one is the scariest? that I've ever done so far? You know what? That's a good question. I actually would have to resort to the balloons. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that it's just the suspense of it, and that is just the, the most awful thing in the world. And even thinking about it makes my hands quiver, makes my stomach rumble. Wait a minute, why is my stomach rumbling? I think we should get into making <laughs> some pies for looking at pie graphs more closely. What do you guys think, Kobe and Mia? Yes. Yeah, all right. So what's the first? Um, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make the pie with pudding. So we have chocolate pudding and vanilla pudding, and we're going to pretty much use one, one or the other. But what I like is I like to use 70% of my pie filled with chocolate pudding and about 30% of my pie filled with vanilla pudding. And if you add 70 and 30% together, it equals 100%, which is the whole. Yes. And Katie, what are you going to do with the chocolate and pudding? Are you going to stick with um, what I did with 70% and 30% as well? Good question, Kobe. First thing I'm going to do is ha sanitize my hands because we want to make sure that we are practicing good hygiene when we are doing something that we are going to eat later. This is going to be my midnight snack, of course. All right, so I also like a little bit of chocolate, a little bit of vanilla. I am a little more of a 50-50 girl, really like that middle line there. So I'm going to do 50-50. What about you, Mia? I am going to make my pie one-third chocolate and then two-thirds vanilla. Ooh, throwing in those fractions, hey? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so remember to tune in to our um, other episode where we talked about fuzzy fractions, where we made slime and learned all about fractions like one-fourth, one-thirds, a whole and a half and all of that. Uh, so the next thing that we're going to do is use whipped cream, the best part of a pie, and that is necessary. And instead of splitting up and sectioning it into different parts, I'm just going to use 100% of that whipped cream. I'm going to fill 100% of my pie with whipped cream. Yeah, all that good stuff. 
Wow, that looks pretty yummy, Kobe. It's my favorite thing in the world. Well, <laughs> if you don't mind, maybe I'll have some of that whipped cream. Here. Perfect. Thank you. All right, viewers at home, you can see that I have separated my pie right into 50-50. Look at that middle line. That is almost perfect, I would say, 50-50. <laughs> but I also do really like whipped cream, so if Kobe didn't use it all, I'm going to also put 100% whipped cream on my pie <laughs> and all over my table. That's what science is, folks. You get really messy. How are you doing over there, Mia? Good. I tried to make mine one-third chocolate and then two-thirds vanilla, except the chocolate kind of was on the, s the spoon still, so it kind of got mixed in with the vanilla, but that's okay. <laughs> and I'm also going to do 100% whipped cream. Ooh, that's some good stuff. Oh, yeah. All right, so I always say, uh, what is a good pie without some good toppings? So I think that we need to dive into some toppings and we can look closer at what a pie graph really is. Let's take a look at what Kobe's doing. I'm going to add, um, I think I'm, I liked how Katie did the 50%, 50% um, chocolate and vanilla pudding. So my third layer of pie, I'm going to do 50% of gummy bears and 50% Oreos. And I'm just going to uh, drizzle that on top because you know gummy bears is literally the best type of candy uh, out there. And maybe some Oreos as well. Yeah. Katie, what are you going to do over there? Wh ha what have you decided on? Awesome. That looks really good, Kobe. I'm going to make my pie a little bit more complex, but kind of the same idea. So I have some Oreos here, and what we are going to do uh, is kind of chop them up, and we are going to make that seven or 25%, not 75%, 25% of our pie. So I'm going to restrict it to that corner there. There's my little Oreo corner. Now, my sister would be very disappointed in me if I did not add chocolate chips onto my pie. She's an avid chocolate chip fan. And because I like both chocolate and vanilla so much, I have a little baggie with both chocolate chips and vanilla chips. So what we're going to do is we are going to put that on 50% of our pie because she will probably eat half of this when I get <sighs> home. So there we go. We're sprinkling that on our 50% of our pie. All right, so we have 50%, we have 25%. We are missing another 25%. If we're gonna go a little bit deeper, well let's split that 25% into two. So if we do that, we have 12.5% left for two more toppings. One 12.5% is going to be gummies. And the other 12.5% is going to be a nice little package of these candies right here. And I'll spread these out and let you guys take a look here. So we have my finished pie, which is 50% chocolate chips, 25% Oreos, 12.5% gummies, and 12.5% uh, this, uh, these other little candies. Wow, and I think that's so diverse. It's very, very <laughs> diverse pie. <laughs> All right, Mia, what do you have over there? All right, so I'm going to be using these jelly fruit gummies, and I'm going to be using, they're all the same, except they're all different colors. So I'm going to separate them by their color. So I'm going to do 25% of each, so four. So first I'm going to put my orange ones. So my orange ones will go here, 25%. And then my green ones, another 25%. My yellow ones, 25%. And my red ones. And now it's so nice and colorful. Wow, taste the rainbow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that looks wonderful, Mia. Thank you for showing that to us. All right, let's take a look at one of our questions here. So somebody asked, can you go up by twos on the y-axis and go up by five on the x-axis, or does it have to be the same? Colby, you made that wonderful line graph for us, so what do you think? Um, so that's a really, really good question. Uh, the x and y-axis, they can use different, uh, it can different factors, but they have to stay consistent. So for example, for the x-axis, if you're going up by twos, you make sure that you are s going up by twos the entire way. And if you're for the uh, y-axis, um, it has to be consistent as well. So if you're going up by fives, so you can go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and so on and so on. So yes, your answer to the, to th to the question is yes. The answer is yes. Wonderful. 
All right, couch potatoers. Uh, we have made some wonderful pies here today. We've learned lots about graphs, but you know what? There's been a feeling in my heart that I've been waiting for all show, and it's our favorite time of the show. It's a competition between two candidates, and it is called a science showdown. Wonderful. Our science showdown today is going to be a competition looking at responses that we have gathered from you folks. So we have posted a survey on our social media. Also, the Eyes fam answered these questions, and it is going to be a test between Mia and Kovi. Who can guess the top three of each of these questions? So what's going to happen is I am going to ask the question, uh, we are going to take a look at the top three answers that you guys and that the Eyes family have submitted. And the first person between Kovi and Mia to raise a sign and to make an animal noise is going to be able to answer that question first. If they get the answer correct, they will continue to answer the questions. If, however, they get it wrong, it will be turned to the other person. We're going to test their knowledge to see if they know kind of their friends and the eyes from and a little bit about graphing as well. All right, Kobe and Mia, are you guys ready? Yes. yes. So ready. Wonderful. All right, let's take a look here. So the first question, name a side dish that you eat with a Hamburger. Boom. <laughs> oh, I think I heard Kobe first. <laughs> Kobe, what do you think one of the answers are? I think one of the answers is fries. French fries. French fries. That is number one. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Kobe, because you got that answer correct, what do you think number two or three are? I feel like number two is salad. Let's see. Great job, Salad. Kobe. Whoa, Whoa, nice. <laughs> well, look at me go. <laughs> all right, Kobe, if you can get this, you get all the point values. If not, okay. Mia has a chance to steal. All righty. What do you think answer number three is? I think answer number three is soup. And ah, dang it. <laughs> soup <laughs> is wrong. Question turns over to Mia. Mia, what do you think? Okay, I'm just going to take a guess, and I'm going to say mashed potatoes. <laughs> that is wrong. <laughs> both of you are wrong so far, but I'm feeling generous today. You both get one more guess. Kobe, what do you think? Uh, I think another one would be onion rings. And <laughs> <laughs> not onion rings either. Mia, if you get this, you steal all the points from Kobe. Um, pickles? <laughs> not what pickles is it, either. Katie? You know what? I guess, I don't know what really the Ice fam was thinking, but... Uh, Sweet potato fries. Oh. oh, sweet potato fries. They are so good. That's very, very true. Which is very much a distinction from regular French fries. All right. So if you, if you take a look at our back here, I have actually made a bar graph <laughs> of our responses. So you can see that French fries, we had 14 responses that said French fries, salad was six, and sweet potato fries was two. Ooh. All right. Wonderful. Are you guys ready for your next question? Yes. yes. Next question is... Make sure you won't look at the answers. <laughs> Name a female scientist. Moo. <laughs> Mia, you got it right. <laughs> okay, I'm going to say Marie Curie. Yes, Marie Curie. You're right. Yes. Because you got it right, you get another chance. Okay, I'm going to say Rosalind Franklin. Rosalind Franklin's correct. Great job, Mia. Yes. You got the first two correct. Can you get the third one? Okay. I'm going to say Kavina, <laughs> who works at Eyes with us. <laughs> is that correct? Uh, that is oh. not correct, even though she is a very wonderful scientist. Kovi, you have a chance to steal. Um, um, Lise, I don't know if I'm saying this correctly, Lise Meitner? And ah. Wrong. <laughs> Good guess. Mia, take another guess. Um, Jane Goodall? Eh, wonderful person, but not on the list. <laughs> Kofi, one more time. Um, oh, we did a, a, spot, a, a STEM spotlight, so Dr. Britt Hall. 
Eh, again, a wonderful female, a wonderful woman in the world of STEM. But the correct answer is me. Oh. Katie. <laughs> <laughs> We oh, had... sorry. <laughs> sorry, guys. I did not trick you. I promise. Just like my other guarantee, that was the third most respondent. So <laughs> thank you, guys. All right. You can take another look at our fancy dancy bar graph here. So most responded was Marie Curry with 10 responses. And then it was Rosalind Franklin with six. And then it was me with two. Um, oh, so I should have guessed that. <laughs> I should have guessed that. Too. Sorry. You guys are both doing wonderfully. Ooh, all right. Katie, um, what's the next question? The next question is name a fruit that you eat in the morning. <laughs> oh. oh, I'm gonna have to go with Kobe on this one. Name it for you in the morning. Banane, banana. You got the bananas right, Kobe. Yeah. Bananas is number one. Perfect. Um, number two, I think it's orange. Forget the, oh. You got number three right. Yeah. <laughs> Good job, Kobe. If okay. you can guess the second one, it's then. It's either apple or strawberry, I have to say. I think it's strawberry. And Dang oh. it. Mia. Okay. I'm going to guess apple. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Yeah. Oh, she yeah. stole my points. <laughs> Great job, Mia. You got them. You stole all the points. Let's take a look quickly at our graph here. Fruit in the morning. We have bananas triumphing. 11, apple at 6, and orange at 4. Ah. Uh. All right, second last one, guys. What is the best part of Friday Fun Day at Ice Camp? <laughs> Kobe. Uh, I think one of the best, my favorite thing is the water gun fight. Good job, Kobe. Yes. That's number one, one answer. Number one, okay. Number two. <laughs> uh, I think number two is the pies, when you pie an instructor in the face. That's number two. Yes. Good job, okay. Kobe. All right, this last happened time. last time. Are we going to do deja vu or are you going to get it right? Uh, I think number three, pizza party. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah. Ah. Wow, Kobe, you got them all correct. Okay. Great wow, job. Look at me go. And you can see here that our graph is going to look a little bit different because we actually have a tie between the first two answers. So we have five people voted for water gun fight, five for pies, and three for pizza lunch. Wonderful. Nice. This is the last question, guys. So, uh, Make sure it's right. <laughs> okay. This is a fun one. Name a behavior that a dog can get away with in public that a person cannot. Moo. <laughs> Mia. <laughs> okay. I'm not that familiar with dogs, but I'm going to guess licking or a kissing. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, no, I'm not going to give that. That was a good guess, though, Mia. Kobe. Um, I think one of them would be barking. Barking is number two. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, Next guess, Kobe. Um, sniffing other people. Sniffing is number three. Oh. Sniffing other dogs' butts. That would look <laughs> weird if you were doing that. What's number one? Um, panting. And <laughs> good try, Kobe. Mia, back to you. If you um, get this, you steal all the points, and you win the entire show. <laughs> Um, jumping on laps? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good guess, Mia, but <laughs> eh, it's no, give wrong. Me, give me another one, give me another <gasps> guess. Kobe, you get one more guess. Okay, wagging your tail. <laughs> <laughs> Mia, this is the last one. Are you going to get it? <laughs> um, sleeping all day. Don't <laughs> <you> sleep. <laughs> the correct answer is peeing or pooping <laughs> oh. on the ground. <laughs> Duh. All right. <laughs> that would also look very strange, folks, if you did that out in public uh, with nothing else. So you can see here that that is number one with seven, barking, number two with four, and sniffing butts, number three. All right. Wonderful. Thanks for playing, guys. That was a wonderful science showdown. <laughs> so uh, now we are going to get into our kids' question wrap-up. So just remember that if you are wanting to send in your questions before Ask Our Scientists, then you can al uh, always find us on social media at YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram with the handle at EyesYouth, using the hashtag CouchPotatoLab. You can also reach us at our phone number at 306-570-1013. All right, so 
what we're going to do is each of us are going to tackle a different question in the fir- for the first three questions that we asked you guys at the beginning of the show. So, Kobe, if you would like to please present the results with how many hours a week do you play video games? So, um, I, pl- uh, I play about um, 10 hours of video games a week, and I saw that in many of the responses as well. So, we got a total of seven responses. All right, and let me just quickly finish this up. <coughs> All right, so in my y-axis, I have the number of people um, and or a number of responses. And in my x-axis, I have how many hours. So right here, I got, sorry, just taking a, sorry. OK, perfect. Uh, <laughs> okay, cool. Right here. I'm done. <laughs> All right, in my beautiful uh, bar graph, as you can see, we have two responses that people who said 10 hours of video games played. And for f- um, there's one person who said 15 hours of video games played. And there's four people who said 20 hours of videos of video games played. Yeah. Wonderful. Thanks, Kobe, for reporting that. I did favorite type of science. So you can see here that we had three responses for biology, two responses for chemistry, one for physics, and one for coding. So that's great. Thanks for sending that in. Mia, let's take a look at your graph. All right. So mine was, have you been to eyes camp before? So this was just a yes or no answer. So because there were seven responses, um, four said that they have been and um, three said that they have not been. Awesome, wonderful. All right, thanks for reporting that, guys. So now we are going to go into, again, one of our favorite segments of the show, Ask Our Scientists. Awesome, wonderful. All right, so, I am being asked by the Hayes Brothers. Hayes Brothers, thanks for watching again. Katie, do you make your sushi or buy it? What is your favorite kind? That's a great question, Hayes Brothers. So I usually buy my sushi. I've actually always wanted to make my own sushi. I just haven't put in the time yet, but it is something that I would really, really like to try. My favorite type of sushi, I honestly really like dynamite rolls. Those are my favorite. I know it's a classic, but uh, I can't go wrong with those dynamite rolls. So if you eat sushi too, Hayes Brothers, let me know because uh, that's a similarity between the two of us. Wonderful. All right. So we are asking Mia. Mia, would you rather eat French fries for the rest of your life or mashed potatoes? I would 110% rather eat french fries for the rest of my life. I like mashed potatoes, um, mostly with gravy, but I would much rather have fries. But Kobe took that answer, so I had to think of something else. (laughs) (laughs) Awesome. All right, uh, Kobe, here's a question. Mm -hmm. Somebody is wondering, (coughs) can you do fractions or percentages on a pie graph that aren't 25%, 50%, or 75%? Yes, so I created a pie graph right here that shows um, I interviewed my, my eyes team, um, what animals and pets they had. So I asked a total number of 13 people, and in my graph, I can show the proportions of how many, um, people, um, how, like, how many people had a dog, how many people had cats. T- um, th- it seems that there's two people in my team that has snakes and two people in my team that have hamsters. So this is an example. So it doesn't always have to equal 100%. Um, it's just a really good um, diagram to show the proportions of, how of your data. Mm-hmm. Awesome, thanks, Kobe. All right, another question here, Mia, for you. I'm not in university, but sometimes I do science. Am I a scientist? Yes. You are a scientist. Um, Whenever we do experiments and stuff, you can always, anyone can be a scientist. It doesn't matter who you are, anyone can be a scientist and do experiments and labs. 
Awesome. So thank you so very much, Mia. Thank you all for tuning in. Uh, so we have been doing a giveaway. And the question we have been asking is, in episode eight, what did we name our in-studio elephant? So we received one response from the Hayes brothers. Thank you so very much, Hayes brothers, for sending in your answer. You were so close, so, so close to the correct answer. One might even say that you were two letters off from the correct answer. So, because we did not receive the correct answer, we are going to extend this giveaway until the end of next week. So please, go back, watch episode 8, see what we named our in-studio elephant, and make sure that you use the phone number uh, or use our social media platforms, Eyes Youth, hashtag Couch Potato Lab, to text us in your responses. And you can win. <laughs> One sec. You could win this wonderful potato clock. Who doesn't want a potato clock, right? I want a potato clock. <laughs> exactly. If somebody was to uh, to get our answers, I know that Mia, Kobe, and I, we would all be 100% wanting this potato clock. So if you want a potato clock, then make sure you text in that answer. Also, the giveaway also includes um, an I swag bag. So it includes like a t-shirt, maybe a hat, and a USB drive, a whole bunch of different things. And so make sure you um, enter our giveaway for that as well. So you get a double whammy. You get an I swag bag and a potato clock. It's a good time. Awesome. Thanks for that, Kobe. All right, so we have come to the end of another wonderful show here on the Couch Potato Lab. We had a lot of fun today learning about graphs, different types of graphs, all that kind of fun stuff. Make sure that you check out our, our blog at bit.ly slash Couch Potato Lab in order to check the lab manual for next week to get your materials ready for next episode, which is on Monday. All right, so thank you all so, so much for tuning in today. Uh, we also want to give a huge shout out to our sponsors and our supporters. Without them, this wouldn't be possible. And of course, to you, the viewers, for always supporting us, always being here with us, and doing some fun science things together here with us. All right, so we will see you guys next week. Have a wonderful week ahead. Bye! Bye!